If you are looking in your wallet and you do not see a lot of money and you do not want to break the bank or sell a horse and you want a good planetary camera on a very affordable price, this video is for you. I have here the SV Boni SV305 planetary camera. This camera you can buy at a price around 150 US dollars. I do believe this is the best camera that you can buy for this price, the Ezibony SV305 and in this video I will show you why. Now let's see what we have in this small box. I will uh, open it. We have here the Ezibony 305 camera. Here we do have a USB 2 power port. Here we do have a cap, we can open it and yeah, we can see here the sensor, very small sensor. And actually this camera has the same sensor as the ZW290 that it was around 300 US dollars, so similar price with the 224. It is a color camera with a small sensor of 2 megapixels. We do have pixel size of 2.9 microns that will allow us to get very nice details and good image scan even with shorter focal length telescopes. This is another plus for the Ezibony 305. We have only a USB 2.0 connection that means it will not be so fast as other cameras with USB 3. It does have region of interest where you can get up to 130 frames per second with the smallest resolution that is more than enough to get very good planetary imaging. And let's see what other accessories we do have. Here we have a C-Lens adapter that we'll, we will be able to connect it here, like this. And we do have here a small one and quarter inch extension too that we can use also to mount filters. And here we manage to place a filter. However, this camera does have an higher cut filter that will cut the infrared. If you have a shorter focal length telescope, I do recommend you also Barlow lens and I've tested this uh, 2.25 modular Barlow from Bada. You can place the camera in the Barlow like this. And after this, you can place it directly in the focuser. Let's say you have a Newtonian. If you do have other telescope design, like the refractor telescope, you might need also to use an extension tool. Uh, and I have two here. This is a 50 millimeters extension tool for two inch. We have here also a manual that you can read. We have an USB to cable. It has here uh, two USB cables in case you need more power from an older laptop and we will just uh, place here the cable in the camera and connect it's enough to connect the main cable to your laptop I've also plugged the second one but I did not notice any difference here we do have also a cleaning cloth and a small, a small CD with drivers another very useful accessory is a one and quarter inch reducer. I have this one from DSO and you can use this and place it here and now we can capture the full moon without a problem using this camera with my Technosky 70mm triplet at 420mm focal length. I was wondering if this camera can be used for guiding because it does not have an ST for cable connection. So I've connected to my laptop. I've also connected my Star Adventurer 2i and I open PhD2. Make sure if you want to use this camera for guiding that you have the latest versions of PhD2 and it is updated. I connected wireless with the laptop using an application and 
after that I opened PhD2, I configured the camera and I was able to start guiding. So I've used my Techno Sky Triplet Telescope 7420 on the Star Adventurer using a Ledusa. So I had 360mm focal length. And I've tested it on the Horset Nebula. I managed to get 4 minutes on the Star Tracker with round sharp stars. This camera can be used also as a guiding camera. To be able to use this camera with sharp cap, you also need to install the drivers first. After that, you'll have two options to connect sharp cap to the SV Bonnie 305 camera. Uh, you probably should select the first one and you should check if you do have also the raw color space. If not, uh, try select the other or uh, reset the camera. I've already focused and it seems I do have the RGB24 color space. And we do have also option for RAW 12. On RGB24 I've noticed the white balance is not so good and it needs some tweaking to be able to have better colors on your lunar or planetary imaging. However, you can make some adjustments and get a good color balance. So my recommendation on what color space is best to use is the RAW 12. And as for the output file, I would recommend you to select SER file. Let's see the results with the Technosky SLD70 approximatic triplet and the SV Bonnie 305. On my first test on the moon, I did not have good scene conditions. Actually, the moon was quite low in the sky, so the quality was not that great. Now let's continue and see the lunar videos and images that I obtained with the SG305 and the Heritage 100 on the Star Adventure 2i. I was really impressed on what this camera can do even with beginner telescopes that are under 200 US dollars. Let's see also the results that I've got with my Maxutov 127 and 1500 millimeters focal length.
These were the results that I've obtained with this camera on lunar and planetary. And if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. After uh, capturing these videos, I was really impressed with the quality that this camera offers for this price. And I really do recommend you. I obtained now the AZ-1 305 as a terrestrial camera to see how it performs without using any filters. We can use this camera also as an electronic eyepiece and make electronic assisted astronomy, also called EAA. And we'll be able to see deep sky objects and make live stack. And I'll show you this in more detail in another video regarding astrophotography on emission nebulas because of the filter. The air cut 650, it did cut a lot of the H alpha signal, so the result was poor. It is an example with the Horse Nebula. And I took this with my refractor telescope, the Technosky 70, and the Reducer corrector. So I was at 210 millimeters focal length. Now let's see also a result that I've obtained with the budget telescope, the Newtonian 100, with this camera on Andromeda Galaxy. So on Galaxy star clusters, you can get better results than on the emission nebulas because we will get more signal in green and blue. These were my results with uh, the SG305 on uh, deep sky astrophotography. I wanted to make some tests. I was curious to see if I can get similar results like the ZW224MC. The 224MC was better, especially on an emission nebula. You can remove the filter if you want, and this camera will be more sensitive, but uh, then you'll also lose the warranty. And you need to place another filter instead to be able to clean the camera from dust. Well, this was my review for the SV Boni SV305 planetary camera. A very good camera for the price. And I do hope you find this video useful. If you did and you liked the video, do not forget to like, subscribe and click on the bell notification so you won't miss any of my future videos. Stay safe my friends and clear sky.